Good evening. I'm Herman Hansen. But let's just keep that our little secret. Okay? And this is Puppet News. I'm Miranda Lehor. A New Mexico sheriff who is running for mayor of Albuquerque was interrupted while on stage at a campaign event by a flying drone with a sex toy attached to it and a man who punched him. Bernalillo County Sheriff Manuel Gonzalez campaign said the Democrat was unharmed and will not be intimidated. The Albuquerque Journal reported that a video posted on Facebook shows Gonzalez answering questions from the audience while standing on a stage at an event center when the drone bearing the sex toy started buzzing near the stage. A sheriff's office report said the owner of the event center grabbed the device and that 20-year-old Kalen Ashby Dreyer unsuccessfully tried to grab it. The report said Dreyer then turned his attention to Gonzalez, swinging his fist and calling him a tyrant. A deputy wrote that Dreyer punched Gonzalez's hands and was then removed from the event by deputies. Gonzalez said at a news conference on Wednesday that he believed Dreyer was with several companions and spotted someone standing on the other side of a fence who he believes was flying the drone. It became so distracting from the sound and everything I couldn't really get my point across, Gonzalez said. Dreyer has been charged with petty misdemeanor battery and misdemeanor resisting, evading, or obstructing an officer. According to a deputy in the report, Dreyer said that he did not intend to hit Gonzalez, but was upset at the way Gonzalez answered a question and intended to swing his fist through the air. Gonzalez suggested Wednesday that the stunt with the drone may have been sent by the rival campaign of incumbent mayor Tim Keller, also a Democrat. Keller's campaign condemned the stunt as disruptive, rude, and immature, and denied any involvement. To suggest we were behind it is pathetic and the kind of desperation that has marked Manny's troubled campaign, Keller campaign manager Neri Holguin said. Dreyer denied to the Albuquerque Journal that he was working for Keller's campaign and said he's not a fan of the incumbent either. He declined to comment further. Dreyer did not have a listed phone number where he could be reached by the Associated Press to comment or a listed attorney in court records to comment on his behalf. An air monitoring station at Van Spran Airport. This supplies key information about atmospheric and greenhouse gas emissions is being moved to make way for the construction of a new airport hangar. The City Council last month approved a lease to Western Airport Development, which wants to construct hangars for aircraft storage. The construction will take place next to the monitoring station operated by research scientist Detlev Helmig and his company, Boulder Atmosphere Innovation Research, LLC or Boulder Air. Helmug is under a nearly $500,000 contract to monitor local oil and gas emissions as well as greenhouse gases from vehicles in and around Longmont. Erecting the hangar next door to the air monitoring station will interfere with its operation, forcing the move. The city is looking at alternative locations for the station, which plans to move the facility in August. 
a herd of 15 wild elephants that walked 300 miles from a nature reserve in China's mountain southwest were approaching the major city of Kunming on Wednesday as authorities rushed to try to keep them out of populated areas. Chinese wildlife authorities say they don't know why the herd left a nature reserve last year near the city of Pu'er, a region known for tea cultivation. The group was 16 animals, but the government says two returned home and a baby was born during the walk. Authorities have blocked traffic on roads while the elephants crossed and were setting up barriers and using food as bait to try to keep them away from Kunming and other populated areas. On Wednesday, the herd was in Yuzi, about 12 miles from Kunming, a city of 7 million people, the official Xinhua news agency said. It said images taken by drones used to track the herd show six female and three adult male elephants, three juveniles and three calves. Chen Mingyang, an Asian elephant expert cited by Xinhua, said the incident was the longest distance migration of wild elephants recorded in China. Chen said it was possible their leader lacks experience and led the whole group astray. A task force of 360 people with 76 cars and nine drones was tracking the elephants, Xinhua said. Last week, the elephants walked, wandered, through this, you know, they either they either walked or they wandered. It can't be both. This, who's writing this copy? I mean, what am I supposed to? All right, let's let's back it up, back it up. Oh, you're saying I did this? Don't, don't look at me. Oh, Chen Ming Young, Asian elephants in Was at the incident was long just distance. Said their leader expects and that they lacked. Yeah, their leader lacked experience. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what it's like to work with people who lack experience? I'm just all right. I lack experience and the whole group of straying a task force of 360 people with 76 cars and nine drones was tracking the elephants, Zin was said. Here we go. Well, which one is it? Nobody, nobody fixed this. Last week, the elephants wandered the streets of the town of Eshan for six hours after residents were warned to stay indoors, according to Zinhua. Damage done by the elephants to farmland is estimated at 6.8 million yuan, the equivalent of 1.1 million dollars, according to Xinhua. Haley Moriniko didn't hesitate when she saw a large bear facing off with her family dogs from the top of a wall in their Southern California backyard. The 17-year-old ran outside and shoved the bear away, then rounded up the dogs and went back inside her house in suburban Bradbury, east of Los Angeles. Home surveillance video aired by the ABC7 television station shows the mother bear perched atop the wall, swatting at a large black... Oh. Well, yeah, yeah, it was my fault. But what do you expect? I'm just, I'm not... Well, you know what they say about excellence. Well, neither do I, okay? I, I was hoping, I was hoping you would know. All right, so where do we go? Home surveillance, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, home surveillance, home surveillance is fine. We're just, we're just, having, pro we're just having problems this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please forgive us. Our normal standards of excellence will prevail. I promise. Home surveillance. Why isn't it rolling? Home surveillance, uh, 
Home surveillance video aired by the ABC 7 television station shows the mother bear perched atop the wall, swatting at a large black dog on the ground. Two bear cubs are seen behind the bear, while four smaller dogs bark and dart around the yard. Moriniko sprints toward the bear, uses both hands to push the large bear off the wall, and picks up one of the smaller dogs. She and the other dogs then run out the video frame. The bears disappear over a wall into a neighbor's yard. Honestly, the only thing I had in mind was to protect my dogs, said Moriniko. The teen said she escaped with only a sprained finger and a scraped knee, but wouldn't advise anyone to follow her example. She was only thinking about protecting her dogs, Moriniko said. Do not push bears and do not get close to bears, she told KCAL TV. You do not want to get unlucky. I just happened to come out unscathed. Bradbury is a foothill community on the edge of Angeles National Forest. Longmont will move ahead with an ordinance creating a program to license and inspect rental housing in the city. A change that a majority of the Longmont City Council members say will protect both renters and landlords. Cataloging rental properties will also give the city a better idea of what kind of quality housing is available in Longmont which up until now has been largely guesswork. The council voted 4-2 to two with council members Tim Water and Mayor Pro Tem Aaron Rodriguez dissenting to switch from the current complaint-based system in which tenants report problems with landlords to the city. The change will not be immediate. <laughs> La -de -de -de, this is the putting on my puppet song. The putting on the puppet song. I hope we all can get along. I'm putting on my puppet show. It's really cool, don't you know? Whoa, 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 whoa. <clears throat> Back to our standards of excellence. The standards of excellence on the puppet news. It's an excellent puppet news show. Where were we? A judge. Something about uh, reptiles. Why do we always have animal stories? It's always animal stuff on this show. Putting on the pup. Okay, why isn't it rolling? Make it move. It's supposed to be moving. Where's my, where's my script? There we go. A judge has rejected the stand your ground defense of a Florida man who said he beat an iguana to death only after it attacked him, biting him on the arm. P.J. Nalaja Patterson, 43, must stand trial on a felony animal cruelty charge. Palm Beach County Circuit Judge Jeffrey Dana Gillen ruled recently in denying the unusual defense, the South Florida Sun Sentinel reported. The Stand Your Ground law allows a person who is under attack and reasonably fears death or great bodily harm to use deadly force, even if they could retreat to safety. It has been used in several high-profile cases since it was adopted 16 years ago, but this might be the first time the recipient of deadly force was an animal. Prosecutors say Patterson savagely beat, tormented, tortured, and killed the three-foot iguana in a half-hour attack caught on surveillance video. Prosecutor Alexandra Dorman said that at no time was the iguana posing any real threat to Patterson last September and that he was not justified in his actions when he kicked this defenseless animal at least 17 times, causing its death. Animal control officers said Patterson tormented the animal, which is why it bit him on the arm, causing a wound that required 22 staples to close. 
Under state law, people are allowed to kill iguanas, an invasive species, in a quick and humane manner. A necropsy, though, showed the iguana had lacerated liver, broken pelvis, and internal bleeding, which were painful and terrifying injuries, prosecutors contend. But Patterson's public defender, Frank Vasconcelos, wrote that the iguana was the aggressor when it leaned forward with its mouth wide open and showing its sharp teeth in a threatening manner and attacked Patterson. Bleeding from his bite, Patterson kicked the iguana as far as he could, Vasconcelos said. Patterson believed that the iguana could have injected poison in him, and thus he rushed to incapacitate the iguana the best way he could in order to preserve its antidote, Vasconcelos wrote. Iguanas are not poisonous, and typically run when a human approaches. Any force used by Patterson in order to further avoid great bodily harm or even death was reasonably justified, Vasconcelos wrote. Judge Gillen rejected that argument. Patterson could get up to five years in prison if convicted. Thanks to a grant from the Colorado Blueprint to End Hunger, the nonprofit Friends of Longmont Youth has announced another extension and expansion of its free grocery program. In partnership with the Longmont Youth Center, Community Food Share, and Longmont Food Rescue, the grocery program will continue at 1440 Emory Street on Mondays from 3.30 to 5 p.m. through the end of July. In addition, two more sites have been added in partnership with St. Vrain Valley Schools Nutrition Services at Skyline School and Altona Middle School. Both school sites will offer groceries alongside summer meals on Thursdays from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. beginning June 10th through July 1st. Some people are greeted by the family dog. For Todd Westward, it's a ruffed grouse. The bird started hanging out in the New London, New Hampshire backyard last month with Westward while his family was away on a trip. His wife, Mary Beth Westward, posted on Facebook. Since then, the bird, named Walter, has made himself a fixture in the yard. I just thought it was a fluke before we left, Mary Beth Westward said Friday. While we were gone, this bird formed this crazy attachment. He was here every single day, all day long following him. Walter has perched on her husband's shoulder and arm and has visited his backyard workstation. Mary Beth Westward said she's gotten a lot of positive comments from her post and heard some similar stories about social grouses. She said she and the couple's daughters don't have the same bond with Walter. He appears to chase them away. He runs like a feathered velociraptor while he chases us down the driveway in our cars. And he goes back up and sits on the porch and pretends to be our watchbird, Westward wrote in her post. The ruffed grouse is the state bird in Pennsylvania. The tame grouse phenomenon happens in the spring during the peak breeding season according to a video last year from the Pennsylvania Game Commission. One theory is that the grouse is acting hyper-territorial. A drug dealer in the English city of Liverpool thought he was the big cheese until police got all the evidence they needed to arrest him from a picture to arrest him from a picture he shared of himself holding a small block of creamy stilton. Carl Stewart, 39, was sentenced to 13 years and six months in prison at Liverpool Crown Court last week after he pleaded guilty to conspiracy to supply cocaine, conspiracy to supply heroin, MDMA, and ketamine, and transferring criminal property. Were it not for a photo he shared of himself, holding the cheese block from the reputable British retailer Marks & Spencer, he could still very well be supplying large amounts of drugs. Stewart was arrested after he posted the photo on the encrypted messaging service and crow chat via his handle Toffee Force. 
Unbeknownst to him, the service had been cracked by police in Europe. From that, his palm and fingerprints were analyzed, and police had their men. Mercy signed Police Detective Inspector Lee Wilkinson said Stewart had been caught out by his love of Stilton cheese. Stewart isn't alone in having his criminal activities brought to a premature end by his activities on EncroChat. Merseyside police say around 60,000 users have now been identified worldwide, with about 10,000 of them in the UK alone. All are said to be involved in coordinating and planning the supply and distribution of drugs and weapons, money laundering, and other criminal activity. Merseyside police has arrested more than 60 people as part of Operation Venetic and three more criminals were sentenced to long-term prison terms on Wednesday. Three more are due for sentencing Thursday. Sean Harrison, 33, was one of those sentenced to 10 years, 8 months in prison after pleading guilty to conspiracy to supply cocaine and cannabis. Harrison was caught out after he revealed personal details of himself on EncroChat, on which he went by the handle Scant B and Sender Ferret. Merseyside police, along with law enforcement agencies across the world, will leave no stone unturned in our pursuit of those people who think they are above the law and will continue to target anyone involved in serious organized crime to keep this positive momentum going. Workers at two Longmont Cannabis Companies unionized this week, a move the labor organization hopes sets a precedent as the first ever national union contract for CBD workers. Workers from Union Harvest and Nature's Root will join the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, which counts 22,000 Colorado members and bills itself as the nation's largest cannabis workers union. Justin Eisenach, Union Harvest's managing director and founder, says he hopes the move will serve as an example to others in the industry. The effort to unionize cannabis workers has been growing steadily across the country in recent years, and the pandemic only hastened the pace. Much of it has been led by UFCW, which Rolling Stone magazine dubbed America's most powerful cannabis union. But even though Colorado became the first state to legalize marijuana, Workers at pot shops across the state struggled for years to unionize. In 2016, efforts by a Pueblo worker to organize a union led to his ousting. The following year, workers at the Rocky Mountain High Dispensary voted in favor of forming a union, only to withdraw their union or their support. Employees at Tweed Leaf, a network of Colorado dispensaries, are currently awaiting a decision by the National Labor Relations Board. And that's all we have time for. For Puppet News, I'm Claude. I'm Miranda Lahore. Good night.